PCIe 5 motherboards are only now starting to ship to customers, but that's not slowing down development of this crucial peripheral connection standard. PCIe 6 is already on the table with some concrete improvements over the current cutting edge standard. Since PCIe is becoming fundamental in computers of all shapes and sizes, it's worth discussing what PCIe is, what it's used for, and what the new PCIe 6 standard will offer in the future. If you're unfamiliar, PCIe is short for Peripheral Component Interconnect Express. Some of you who've been around computers for a while might remember the old PCI standard, but PCIe is to the original PCI as a fighter jet is to a paper airplane. In other words, there's a huge difference. PCIe is not only a protocol, but also a physical hardware connection standard. And the most common PCIe hardware connection standard is the motherboard expansion slot. Expansion cards are connected to these slots and communication happens over the connecting pins. It's also possible to send PCIe protocol signals over other types of connections, such as Thunderbolt or the M.2 SSD connectors on modern motherboards. The headline improvement is an expected big leap in the data rate with every PCIe revision. That would be the amount of information that can be moved across the bus every second. In that department, PCIe 6 doesn't disappoint. It actually doubles the already tremendous data transfer rate of PCIe 5 from 32 gigatransfers per second to 64 gigatransfers per second per lane. Where PCIe 5 could shift 63 gigabytes per second, 6 can move up to 128 gigabytes a second. That's over a 16 lane connection with fewer lanes equaling a scaled down performance. That means an 8-lane PCIe 6 slot now has as much performance as a 16-lane PCIe 5 slot. This thankfully creates plenty of headroom for future GPUs and ultra-fast storage solutions, not to mention incredible scope for external devices connected via PCIe or expansion cards that offer Thunderbolt and USB 4. Making such a monumental performance leap in a single generation isn't easy. To achieve these numbers, the PCIe engineers had to develop a few innovative new ways to move electrons around. First off, there's PAM4 signaling. Quite possibly the most significant change with PCIe 6 compared to previous generations of the interface is how data is encoded. PCIe Express 6 uses PAM4, which is short for Pulse Amplitude Modulation with four levels. If you know anything about electrical waveforms, you'll know that the amplitude of the wave is how far the wave's crest is from the baseline. Older NRZ, or non-return to zero PCIe encoding, only had two amplitude levels per pulse during the clock cycle. PCIe 6 doubles that to four, increasing the amount of data encoded with each cycle. While the PAM4 encoding method provides a significant boost to speeds, it also provides a big boost to the number of errors. In other words, a 1 arrives at its destination instead of a 0, and vice versa. To combat this, PCIe 6 has a new forward error correction feature, which checks to make sure the data is getting where it should go without getting corrupted, with the help of a robust CRC or cyclic redundancy check implementation. One danger of adding more error correction steps in the pipeline is that you'll add more latency. Additional latency has been a growing concern with various high-speed computer components. Although they can shift more and more data, they take longer to react to a request for data, which can cause issues on its own. Forward error correction has been designed to target adding no more than 2 nanoseconds of latency compared to previous versions of PCIe, which is a tiny bit of extra latency no human can detect. Next we have flit mode. Flit mode was another measure introduced to improve error correction in PCIe 6. It organizes data into units of uniform size using a dedicated onboard flow control unit. This is necessary to check packets for errors since you can apply an algorithm to each data packet and check if the packet still gives the correct result when it reaches the other end of the pipeline. The thing is, it turns out that flit mode also brings significant efficiency gains in other places. It helps lower latency, makes bandwidth usage more efficient, and lets PCI 6 do away with much of the encoding overhead from previous versions. So although PAM4 adds up to 2 nanoseconds of latency, flip mode saves on latency in other areas. One interesting feature in PCIe 6 is L0P mode. This mode reduces the number of lanes a peripheral uses to send and receive data. So if your laptop is running on battery power and the GPU doesn't need 16 lanes to do its current job, it will drop down to only using the number of lanes it needs, saving electricity by increasing power efficiency. PCIe 6 is an amazing upgrade over what you have in your computer today. 
but there's no reason for regular users to care about this yet, since none of the GPUs or other peripherals you'll buy today or in the near future could make use of this additional performance. See you next time.